Good morning and welcome to a vlog I have been just waiting to film. It's my Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials vlog, which will see two days of action. I'm headed up there today, Friday, to compete myself, obviously not in the four star. Star and I are heading up to take part in the 100 centimeters Pony Club Challenge, which should be the perfect pre-Osmerton like atmosphere kind of test for Star. And then I'm back up on the Sunday to actually sit on the influencer panel on the Beyond the Blenheim stable stage which is a little bit surreal and I'm really excited to show you that as well. I literally just started to say the plats are good. Wow. Well done, Flo. It's a rarity. Right, so I've just hung up our little uh, Blenheim entry thing, and Mum is complaining that she now can't see through the windscreen. It's not quite that. Is this is... this um, blind was closing. <laughs> closing across the window so I, I was just worried I was going to end up with a little break up with the window. You've got acres of room! Tiny people there! That's like. bigger than my entire car! Right. Made it! Spot the palace in the distance. You can always tell when it's mum who's done the board because the writing is actually straight whereas when I do it it's always wonky. I'm not actually sure it is. <laughs> You haven't written my time on there. Oh, so what's your time? Three fifty. You do not always do the board. I've done it all the time recently. You wrote Bernie on there. Yes. <laughs> We have made it to Blenheim and we've got a couple of hours before I need to jump or start getting ready. So we're gonna go and have a little look around, see how much has changed since I was here for the media day last week, see what shops are here. I'm gonna save most of my shopping for Vix for Sunday, but Vix is currently unsure whether she's coming on Sunday, so she might have to make a purchase. Have you got anything on your wish list to buy? Um, I've got a prior commitment on Sunday, that's all I want. Do you need to make excuses for the vlog? There's other members in the family doing their sporting yeah. endeavours. No, nothing on my wish list, I just like having a nose. I bet you'll still come away with something. <laughs> We've made it and look how different this combination looks to in the media day vlog when it was all bare, not dressed at all. It looks a lot more imposing now. We are lost somewhere in Burnham Park. No, we're not actually lost, but the 100 Ventures Challenge, like, course walk route that we have to take to get to the actual arena is proving to be a bit of a trek getting all of the sights and scenes of Blenheim which I'm sure Star's going to be very excited about so we're just going to kind of figure it out now so that when I'm on like a joggy excited Star. What do you mean? There is supposed to be... I thought Harry Potter was filmed in Scotland. I thought there was some link with a tree on Blenheim soil. I could be wrong. Not a bad view. Right, course is walked and I'm just going to say it's going to be a miracle if I remember it. There's 18 fences. I think I was complaining in the early vlog that there was 10. There's 18 fences or 12, but there's 18 anyway. As if my name is on the board. <laughs> oh my god, get me in the shot. <laughs> Getting you walking in. Course is all walked and we've watched a few and we had a little wander around, had a little look at the Beyond the Blenheim stage where I'll be on Sunday. I haven't done too much shopping, I'm hoping that Sunday is going to be reserved for that. But we did make one purchase and I'll have to show you what it is because I feel like if you're uh, not new to the channel it's probably just about what you expect us to be purchasing. Five brownies, not one, not two, but we're going to share, we're going to share with the family at home. Anyway, hopefully you can hear some of this audio over the sound of us rustling but uh, time to start getting Star ready and try and remember the course. Not quite the 
five star soil last year was on. Close. No taking credit for my amazing plaits. I did them today. They are very good. <laughs> They're so good. not. They're just totally, just not awful. There is one or two that maybe need fixing. No, that's his ear fluff. We like seeing stars come. Long may it remain. Never a show day without a drama, is there? Um, unfortunately, Star was shod on Wednesday of last week. We've just gone to put studs in and the back ones literally just went straight in, like tried to twist them in and no twisting. They won't catch the thread because the holes are obviously just a bit too big, which is really unfortunate, really annoying. And when you see how twisty turny the track we're about to jump is, it kind of, it's even more annoying, but I'm gonna try not to change my game plan. We've got no studs, because I was always taught you can't have bigger studs in the front than the back. So if there's nothing in the back, you can't have anything in the front. Gonna just try and ride the same. However, if we sort of get out and he starts slipping, then we'll uh, adjust plans and just go for more of a comfort ride. But yeah, time to uh, get on. I'm forgetting something. Star looking well up for the challenge, look. Is that oh. where he's a four star? He says he's blending! <laughs> he's Irish, he's not blending in. He does now. It's a little snapshot of, uh, well, shopping village really. You can see on the left hand side is where they're warming up for the class of those days. And as you know, I always like to do a little tour of the Lloyd Park as well. You can see everything that's here. This lake that they'll be jumping through tomorrow. I'm going to go on a long walk around to the Warm Up Arena. Still looking nice and calm, which is great. Um, and you can see how close we are to all the sort of trade stand action. Because if I just swing around here, it's just there. <laughs> Always gets a bit excited when he comes in. <laughs> uh, this is for the slow carter and able star for the South Oxfordshire Hunt South riding as an individual and Flo is just going into her final year of university studying history at uh, Loughborough University. She was also the chair of their equestrian team last year.
Yeah, I literally I looked at Brilliant them. Brilliant round of close cards there. That was and then clear. they went through a coach and I was like, there's Vic. <laughs> so I decided to come and say, we off. often say good luck to our lot though, but good luck here. Just walking him off post a really, really lovely round. We think she might have been a bit too speedy though. Close highly. I didn't think it was possible to beat him fast, but you're too fast. He was very good boy, made that thought easy. However, of them, we were the third fastest, and basically the closer to the optimum time we are, the better. So we ended up in ninth place, which, like I said, out of over 100 people is not bad. And he's been a superstar all day. He's dealt with the atmosphere, which I thought he was going to find a bit overwhelming. He's, yeah, just been awesome, really good. So that's a really positive thing ahead of us soon. And uh, bring on Sunday when we're coming back, but for a totally different day. You won't catch me in my uh, sweats. We'll be a bit more glammed up. Nice right, day two of Blenheim is a go and we are heading back up there. I've got my influencer panel today which is a little bit surreal and very exciting. It's going to be Rhea asking the questions and me and Beth Sen answering them. So we will see what that brings. I've never done anything like it before. So it's going to be a great opportunity. And before that we've got a whole day to kind of enjoy the atmosphere. The nice thing about the Sunday of Blenheim is you've got cross country and show jumping. You've got the eight and nine year olds cross country which I feel like a lot of people don't know about and then the four star long show jumping yesterday was really exciting I managed to watch a couple of rounds on H&C and Yazingham kept hold of her lead which was very exciting so we're gonna go and see how that pans out do some shopping so I didn't really get a chance to do that on Friday Honestly, I'm just buzzing. I think it's going to be great. The only slight downside is that the weather is not supposed to be as good as it was on Friday. We are due some rain, maybe even some thunder right around the time that I'm supposed to be speaking on stage. So maybe everyone's going to flock home, who knows. But I'm just going to pure vibe, be positive, try and enjoy it. And we're going to see what happens. We've made it and you can see it's a little bit windy. Dan's here. What are your first impressions of Blenheim? It looks very exciting. <laughs> We've really not seen anything yet, so I'm putting on the spot. But we're going to go have a little bit of a wonder, try and get some signal if we can figure out what time everything starts and maybe get ourselves situated on the cross-country course. Oh, bye! Dan's living his main character moment. He's getting some photos by the palace. So this is where Star and I did our Avengers challenge on Friday. Obviously it looks a little bit different now and uh, you can go for a little race which I was trying to persuade Dan to do. Keen? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. So Flo, we've stopped for a quick break. What are your thoughts on the show so far? My thoughts is that camera's very close to my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been going really, really well. The shopping here is lovely. It's really nice to chat to the guys at Couture and Cotswold Fox. And the cross country's going to start soon, so I think we're going to go and position ourselves out by a big fence and catch in the action. Probably less picturesque Just now. Sorry. <laughs> You're ruining my nice view. <laughs> Except the really nice view is here. That looks like I just turned the camera around. <laughs> Yesterday they ran along. The it means that there's a couple of extra loops that were in the long that aren't in it today. And because they're not being used, you can walk right up to them, which you couldn't do yesterday. So it's definitely quite cool coming on the Sunday. Would recommend it. I'd say it's a little bit less busier here today than it was on Saturday. But we have come to this fence which I spotted on the media day and it's a little bit of a roller coaster I feel like this must be one of the toughest fences to ride and like just getting up to these fences seeing the size of them the technicality the way that David Evans has used the ground is so impressive I don't even know how you'd be able to stride that because you can't get down the hill 
your normal horse drive. Seven minutes and 55. 24.4 time to. They do, they, it to see how they get on very shortly and if you want to do the same you can catch up on demand on HNC Plus. <laughs> right we made it until quarter to two that commentary is going to be really loud and it's just started to rain so we've come back to the car for a sneaky little brolly trip we've had a nice little look at some of the cross country and i just had the really exciting opportunity to do a little bit of chatting for the horse and country socials which was a little bit flustering but it was a really cool experience and now we're going to go get some lunch and my talk on the infants panel is going to come around very very quickly blenheim palace look number two slay Dan's so embarrassed, I just said the word slay. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm embarrassed. It's got really wet. It's T minus about an hour until there's a pole is in my face. <laughs> I'm sorry. Until about T minus about an hour until the talk. So this is gonna send people running for the hills. In fact, Dan can pan the camera around and show you how much it's cleared out already. <laughs> Um, I think it actually might send me running for the hills. I don't think I'm staying for your talk. This is miserable. <laughs> this is not good news, people. <laughs> right. Reg is the man. Who is if the you can hear over the country, we are walking down to the uh, Beyond the Blend activated. Stable stage now. Yeah, I do a little bit of vlogging over on YouTube. I dabble in TikTok, but I, I find TikTok very complicated and difficult to understand. I have a lot of respect for people that can do that. But I started social media back end of 2019, coming off a sort of not a bad season, but a season in eventing because I event them at university. I sort of juggle all of that. But hadn't gone the way I wanted. Um, I stepped up to sort of more better two star level, and it, 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 the results worked great. And I was looking around at other riders at that level who I knew had also had issues and problems, and they didn't really talk about it. It was very sort of hush hush, and I always found myself resenting that a bit. But then I was like, hold on you don't talk about it either so it, it became this idea that i was going to start being totally transparent on social media you know if i have a bad day just as much detail goes into the event report as a good day and that i think is possibly where it sort of started to grow for me because i think people like to see that it's a bit different a bit refreshing so a bit like what beth was saying some of the brands that i've had the opportunity to work with almost a bit of a pinch me moment. A big one will always be Horse Quest. I think I've bought every single horse I've ever owned through Horse Quest and to work alongside them now is such a privilege. Um, but also experiences. I mean, for me, Blenheim is one of my sort of most local big events. I've been coming year after year since I was a little girl. So to be involved with the media day here, to be you know invited to come and speak here are incredible opportunities and the networking that also entails, like it's been lovely to meet some people perhaps in an in industry that I would love to go into. Um, so that's, yeah, that's really cool. As well as that, Pony Club, um, I've always been a massive advocate of Pony Club on my social media for no reason other than the fact that I'm a really big believer in it and the opportunities it gives for young people to compete not against professionals, particularly in eventing that's, you know, once you get hit certain stage, you're always against professionals and that can be 
it can be demoralizing at times. Um, and as a result, I was asked to go and sort of speak at the Penny Club Championships this year. On about five minutes notice, I got to interview Piggy March, which was both an amazing opportunity and incredibly sort of surreal to be sort of asking questions to one of my like eventing idols. So yeah, it's it's the opportunities have been incredible and it's helped me learn a lot about myself as well because I feel like I have been on social media in quite formative years. I sort of started vlogging at about 19 and I thought I want, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I thought I wanted to go down the law route, become a lawyer, but the more I have been exposed to these opportunities that like Beth said earlier, you just wouldn't otherwise have, the more I realised that actually there is a growing industry for this kind of stuff, whether it's you know maybe not sort of doing social media for yourself, but for companies. and the connections I've been able to make through my social media influencing and the skills that you know are transferable to a CV, they have been you know amazing for the long run. So you were going to go to university to do law? I am at university studying history, the plan A was always to do a law conversion afterwards. Right. And perhaps not so much now. <laughs> Where are you going to get companies approaching you for Placement. Influencing, yeah. <laughs> That's it. You can tell I'm not good. No, you are, you're perfectly good. Do you ever have products you want, or do you ever get scenarios where you think I, I fit best to that product and actually want to go and approach them? Does it, does it ever get that scenario or something? Do you know what my favourite story? I don't believe I'd be like here on this stage today if I hadn't been confident to reach out because Rhea might know where this is going. But Rhea hosts a podcast and that is how we sort of first met. And I was a big fan of the podcast, listened to the podcast, thought it was great. And kind of thought, I think I'd be quite relevant on that podcast. I think I'd be quite a good guest because Rhea has a guest about every other week. And I actually sat on it for a while and then I emailed her and I went, here's a bit about me. I think I might be alright on your podcast, you know, don't you have to reply, but let me know. And I sent it and then I almost thought, oh, that was really silly, why did you do that, you know? And within an hour, I had a response going, let's get a date, let's get sorted. And that connection was made there, that probably is a lot in part as to why I'm sat here today. So, yeah, I think definitely more brands will approach influencers, I think it's more the norm. But I don't think you should be afraid when you're starting out if you really think you could be a good fit and you can make a convincing argument is to reach out because sometimes those are the best partnerships, a brand or a company that think this person really wants to work for me and yeah I think it shows that you know about the product well. Right we are heading out, that is a wrap on Blenheim. Palace International Horse Trials Ooh. 2023. <laughs> we are pretty much the last men standing. I think the rain washed a lot of people out, but very cool to have had this whole opportunity to come to the media day, to talk on the stage, to kind of see some of the behind the scenes in the press and media center, feeling very grateful. And of course, star competing here earlier this week was the cherry on top of the cake and has made me feel really good ahead of Osberton, which is going to be possibly my next competition vlog coming out. So that's rather exciting and I will see you then. Bye.